Hello everyone. Welcome to the t video tutorial of Dynamics of Machinery. Today's video will be on very important fundamentals uh, concept for mechanism analysis. Today's video will cover uh, the following uh, topics. First is crush-up condition, and uh, forward linkage, crank slider, complex number as a vector for position velocity and acceleration analysis, force analysis, and balancing. Grashup condition is a very simple relationship that predicts the rotation behavior or rotability of a forward linkage inversions based on only the link length. Let's consider that S is the shortest link, L is the longest link, P and Q are rest of the links length. So, so we would say the linkage is crush up if S plus L is less than P plus Q. Otherwise, we would say that is non crush up. In case of equal, we would say the linkage is special case crush up. So if all the information is given to you like this table, then we can easily find S plus L and P plus Q relationship. Based on this relationship, we'll use this table which is derived by Barker's. So on this table, there are 14 types of um, links are there. We, we are particularly interested on this first column where the relationship is uh, provided. Based on this relationship, we can choose whether our chosen linkage is crush-up, non-crush-up, or spatial crush-up. So this is a forward linkage, very simple forward linkage, where link 2 is connected to ground and link 4 is connected to ground. So these two points, link 2 is connected to ground, and link 4 is connected to ground so this link uh, ground point o2 and o4 is considered as link 1 we can say this is a ground link or fixed link the one link which is connected to the ground and drive the mechanism is considered as input link the another name of is a link to then a link um, the link 4 which is also connected to the ground is a output link in between input and output link link 3 is called coupler coupler link so the link which is fixed we call that link as ground link or fixed link and we start uh, counting the link like this so the link 1 link 2 link 3 and link 4 and the angle of respective so the angles corresponding to the links is denoted as the notation of the links for example theta 2 which is um, corresponding angles for link 2 theta 3 is corresponding angle for uh, link 3 and theta 4 is corresponding angle for link 4 link 1 uh, has angle theta 1 equals 0 that's why we can't, that's why this is a horizontal line all the angles in the video tutorial series will be measured according to the right hand side that means all the angles will be counterclockwise you can see from here theta 2 is counterclockwise theta 3 is counterclockwise and theta 4 is counterclockwise now when it comes to length of the li uh, link we started from link 2 or input link so we started denoted length of the link as a b c and d so it's really important to remember that even though we consider ground link one as a ground link but we start the naming of the length of the link 
from input link so input link as length a couple link length is b output as c and ground link length is t so for for forward crank slider we can consider the driver link is as link 2 and the length of this link will consider as a link 3 we consider as coupler link and the length would be b this one the distance between the slider from the axis or the reference axis that this distance is considered as offset and we can denote this length as c and the distance from this fixed link to the offset of this slider is considered slider position which is denoted as a, a d like forward linkage crank slider in case of crank slider we also consider all the angle as right hand side that means all the angles will be considered positive counterclockwise the position of a point in the plane can be defined as position vector as you can see from the figure that r is the position vector this position vector can be defined in polar coordinates by their magnitude and angle or in Cartesian coordinate as X and Y component. In case of complex number notation, X component is called real part and Y component is called imaginary part. It is really important to remember that by definition of a vector, angles always measures at the root of the vector not at the head always at the root of the vector as you can see from previous two diagram one is the crank slider where each angle for respective vector were measured at the root of the vector theta 2 at the root of length 2 theta 3 as a at theta 4 at a uh, offset at root of uh, offset vector same applies for forward linkage all the vec all the angles were measured at one advantage of complex number notation is that euler identity can be used to convert from polar to cartesian form so let's let's consider a is a point in the plane which is denoted by r vector so if we want to express this vector in polar form we can write r e j theta now r is the length of the vector as well and theta is the angle measured at the root of the vector if we want to convert this polar to Cartesian form we can write down r cos theta plus j sin theta where we use this Euler identity to get from polar to Cartesian let's apply this uh, concept for forward linkage so for link 1 where the length of the link is a and the corresponding angle is theta 2 so the position vector for link 2 would be r2 which we can see from the figure and then we can we can define this vector as a which is magnitude of the vector e j theta theta 2 theta 2 is the angle and in cartesian form we can write a cos theta 2 plus j sin theta 2 similar way for length 3 we can write down b e j theta 3 theta 3 is the angle measured at the root of this vector r3 and in cartesian form we can write down b cos theta 3 plus j sin theta 3 same applies for link 4 now let's consider p is a point on 
link tree so if we joint point a and point b the vector we get is rpa the length of this vector is p and the angle between this ap and ab vector is delta 3 so we can express this rp vector as position vector like the length of this vector which is p ej theta 3 plus delta 3 that is really important we are taking angles at the root of this vector ap and we are taking the angles between this this ap vector and anti-clockwise direction of x so that's why we we added theta 3 and delta 3 to get the position to get the position vector of in form we can write p cos theta 3 plus delta 3 plus j sine theta 3 plus delta all right so what is open and crossed configuration so the terms crossed and open uh, open are based on the assumption that if the Grashoff linkage has input link which is link 2 with an angle less than 90 degree that means it is placed in first quadrant then that linkage can be said open if the adjacent links of the shortest link which which is in this case the shortest link is link 2 and adjacent of this link 2 is link 1 and link 3 if they do not cross each other then we can say that is open and if they cross each other then we can say crossed configuration as the, as the name suggests so this is input link the angle is in first quadrant and this link is also the shortest link adjacent to link 2 is link 1 and link 3 so when link 3 and link 1 did not cross each other that means this line we say this is open configuration when this link link 3 and link 1 crossed each other we say this is a crossed configuration exact same definition applies for crank slider again this is a input link and this is the shortest link adjacent to this link is link 1 and link 3 in this configuration they do not cross each other so we say this is open configuration in this figure adjacent to this link 2 is crossed each other link 3 crossed a ground link link 1 so we call this crossed configuration it is uh, important to note that the configuration of the linkage either crossed or open is solely dependent upon the way the links are assembled we cannot predict based on the link lens alone that they would be open or cross dynamic force analysis can be done by several methods the one which gives the most information about forces internal to the mechanism requires only the use of Newton's law, which we can be called as Newtonian method. In this method, we need to write down a summation of all forces and torque in the system. It is also convenient that we can separate summation of forces into x and y comp in case of one degree of freedom single link in our pure rotation and pure translation it's very convenient to use Newtonian method for force analysis for more than one link 
it's better to use matrix form which will be discussed in the later part of the video series static and dynamic balancing uh, which is would be the last part of this um, mechanism module so static balancing is when the forces are acting in a single plane when the objects are shot in axial direction then the radial direction if you can see from here the distance between this uh, the dis axial distance between these uh, forces are really small compared to the radial directions the value of the speed is not a matter only the rotating is matter and in case of static balancing we just need to sum all the forces acting on the system equal to zero and from there we can find the unbalance and we can find the imbalance of statically imbalanced system and that's how we design static imbalance in case of dynamic balance there are two plane balance and exactly opposite to static balance the objects are relatively longer in axial direction compared to the radial direction to solve dynamic balance or design dynamic balance we use summation of forces and summation of moment all right we saw how the crush up conditions can be identified for forward linkage what are the important notation need to be remembered for forward linkage analysis it could be position velocity or acceleration analysis same applies for cr crank slider we also uh, overview the complex number as a vector to express position vector of a point in a plane we also learn how to analyze forces using very simple expression which is Newton's law and it's a good idea how to design any system statically or dynamically thanks for watching